Hello everybody and welcome back to another video of our games and tech. My name is Gilbert Matos and today I'm going to be teaching you how to click on any object with a collision mask in Game Maker Studio 2. Now, before we jump into the fun stuff, let's look at the demo. Alright, so if that's what you're looking for, then you came to the right channel. Now, before we jump into the code, I have to let you know there are some limitations as to be expected with any code. The limitation of this is that one, it doesn't work if your object does not have a collision mask, which is you know previously stated. And the other limitation is that if you create an object during runtime, you're not gonna be able to make it uh, not interactable. So you can circumvent this by simply going into the step event and adding some code where you add the instance into the game during runtime, and then it gets added to the list, in this case, to the array that we created. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna create an object that will run all of the code that we're going to be needing for this tutorial. In this case, we're gonna call this O controller. So it's gonna be the object controller. And for this controller, we're gonna add an end step event, an alarm, and a create event, along with the draw event. Okay, once that is done, we're going to go into the create event and we're going to declare a macro. We're going to call this macro G and it's gonna hold the value of global. And I'll explain what this will do. So in this case, if you want to declare a variable to be global, you usually have to write global dot and the name of the variable. However, that's a lot to write. And if we want to be able to be more productive, we can go ahead and shorten that time, spend typing that word. So rather than typing global, we're just going to type g that the variable name, which is pretty useful. So once that is done, we're gonna go ahead and declare a couple of variables. These variables are gonna be global in scope. So the first one is gonna be called g that cooldown, and it's gonna be a boolean. So we're gonna set it to false. After that, we're going to declare clicks, and we're gonna set it to zero, and then we're going to go ahead and declare uh, g that held id. So and we're gonna set it to negative one as it's gonna have a value that is gonna be, is gonna be a reference later on. Now we're going to go into the alarm event. Make sure that we copy g that cooldown and we paste it as is into the alarm event. And we're done with that. Now we're gonna go into the end step event and we're gonna declare our left clicking uh, global variable. We're gonna be using this to check for left clicks uh, with the mouse. After that, we're going to declare the name of the script that we're going to be creating next. And the reason why we're doing it here first, it's because we don't want to go and make the script to then come back to the end step event if we were here from the first time, right? From the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to declare the name right here and call it as if it had been created previously. Once that is done, we're going to copy that name and we're going to, and we're going to head back into the scripts and create a new script with this name. After we're done writing the name of the script for a future script, we're gonna go back into the draw event and we're gonna add the other script that we're gonna be running from there. And we're gonna call this draw circle. Now you might be wondering, okay, what is this going to be for? Or maybe you already know from the video. But this is going to be the circles being drawn whenever we're hovering over an instance, right? An object that is selectable. So this is going to be great to give us some feedback. This is just for this tutorial's purpose. Once again, you can do whatever you want. Now, once inside the script, we're going to go ahead and write with all. Now, the with statement is basically a way of going inside of all the objects in your game and run the code that is gonna be inside the curly braces. Now, if you run the with statement with uh, an object name, a specific object name, you're gonna be doing the same, but with all instances of that one object. And this is very useful. Since we can use the keyword all, this code is gonna be running inside all of the instances inside your game, which is pretty great. Next, we're going to go ahead and uh, declare a temporary variable called getID. And we're gonna use position meeting to check for collisions with the mouse. 
And then we're going to type in the ID of the instance running this code. Now, since we'll run in this from inside all of the objects, we're going to return the object ID that is colliding with the mouse. After that, we're going to say if get ID, right? If there's a collision with the mouse and if there's a left click, now we're going to have to make sure that we're not in cooldown and that G that held ID is actually empty. After that, we're going to make sure that this instance variable does not exist, which is don't select me. And I'll explain why this is important. After that, we're going to store the ID that the mouse is colliding with inside the held ID variable. And then we're going to set the G that cooldown variable to true. So this code only runs once. After that, we're going to go ahead and open a region and we're going to say object opacity effect. Now, this is what we, what is going to make sure the object looks transparent when we are holding an ID instead of the held ID variable and the other ones are not selectable. So we're going to have to check for, do we have an ID? If that's the case, then run this code that says if ID is not equal to the ID that we're holding inside this variable, which is held ID, make sure that we lerp and lerping is just linear inter interpolation. That means that we're going to reach a 0.3 value for image alpha, which is going to be very transparent. And after that, we have to make sure to add an else statement that just sets the image alpha back to one. Once that is done, we're going to be writing the next code outside of the with all statement. Okay, right here, we're going to open another region and we're going to say, make sure the selected object follows the mouse. So we're only going to want to follow the mouse when we have an object to do so. So we have to make sure we check for that. So, or otherwise we're going to get an error. Now, once we do that, if we have one, then we're going to assign that objects X and Y to the mouse X and Y. So we're going to say G that held ID that X equals mouse X. And then we're going to say G that held ID that Y equals to mouse Y. And then right after that, we're going to make sure that we capture the amount of clicks that we're doing with the mouse, right? And we're, the way we're doing this is by doing G that clicks plus equals G that left click. Now you might be wondering, why are we using a left click to add to the clicks? Seems a little weird. How does that work? Well, Remember that G that left click is basically a built-in function that comes with the game maker. Now the way that mouse check button press works is that it returns either one every time you press it or zero when you know you have not pressed. It. So that means that every time we click, we're adding one to the clicks variable, but only when we have an object selected. And we're gonna use this later on this next uh, part. Now we're gonna go ahead and open another region and this is going to be to allow us to drop the object when the left when left clicking a second time. So once we have an object, uh, we want to be able to drop the object. So we're going to say if g that cooldown is equal to true, and g that clicks is more or equal to two. So once this happens, then we should be able to drop the object. Now the first thing that you want to do is make sure that your alarm is not running. So we're going to say if not alarm is zero, so if it's not running, or make it run in two steps. Then we go ahead and say g that clicks equals to zero. Now the reason why you want to do this is because if you don't, every time you click on an object, you're going to automatically drop it because the countdown is going to be either two or more than two. And that's what's going to prevent things from happening. One last thing I forgot to mention was that we need to add our g that held id equals to negative one because we want to make sure that we clear the object id that we were holding. All right, so let's go over this little bit of code inside the script drill circle on hover. Now, we're going to be running the with statement as I explained before, and we're going to be using position meeting. So we're going to say if position meeting mouse x mouse y id, then we're going to run this code this says if this variable exists, right? And the variable is don't select me. Then we're going to make sure to draw a red circle on the X and Y of the mouse. And it's going to be 80 pixels wide, right? So that's going to be the radius of the, the circle. 
but we're going to draw it red. And then after that, if it doesn't hold that variable, then we're going to make sure that this circle is aqua. So this is going to be just a visual cue for us to know which objects can be selectable or not. And we're going to be doing the same thing. And last, and pay attention to this, we're going to set back the drawing color to see white. And the reason why we do see white again is because if you leave it as is, then everything else that you draw inside of Game Maker, right? If you don't call another draw set color function, all words or anything that has to do with drawing and color is going to be set to C aqua. So anything that comes after this is going to be C aqua. It's going to be, uh, you know, that kind of bluish uh, color. So make sure you set it back to white. And with that set, we're going to jump into the next section. Now we're going to go into the create event once again. And here we're going to declare an array. An array is going to be like a list, right? So it's basically an um, it's basically a variable that can contain more than one value. In this case, this is called uh, an array literal. You can write it different ways, but the way that I'm doing it right now is called an array literal. So you basically can uh, add a bunch of things in there. In this case, we're going to be adding the names of the objects that we're going to be creating next. It's going to be object one and object two and three. Now, this is going to be the list of objects that we don't want to be able to click and drag with the mouse. We don't want these objects to follow the mouse or check for clicks. In this case, um, we're going to need the size, right? The length of that array. So this array has three values, and that's why we're doing a uh, list, list size. And then we're saying array length I, uh, 1D. 1D is one dimension. So in this case, we have done select list. So we put the name of the list in here, right? The name of the array. And then we use that value later on inside this for loop. And then inside of that, we're going to run another with statement and we're going to say done select. And then we're going to be using curly brackets and we're going to say I. And then next, we're going to go back into the room and we're going to drop some of the instances. Now, don't forget to add the controller object, because if this object is not inside the room, none of the functionality that, we've, that we have worked so hard for is going, to, is going to be available for us. So don't make that silly mistake like I did at the beginning of dropping objects in here, because that was the last thing I did. This is the first thing you should be doing. Now, uh, you're going to want to run the game and see what happens. Thanks a lot to everybody who has been supporting in my Patreon page. I truly appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. I'll make sure that the content keeps getting better and better. And now that I got my new computer, I should be able to bring you even more, more videos a lot faster. I was having a lot of problems with my previous rig, which was so slow that every time I wanted to edit something, it would just not allow me to. I could not even preview the video as I was going through the timeline. And that was pretty horrendous. So now the, the video production is going to be a lot smoother. So you're going to be seeing videos a lot sooner compared to the way they were being handed out before. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it, guys. Until next time, take it easy.